The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John the Baptist had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. Now is the time. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God, the reign of God is at hand. Repent. Believe the good news, the gospel. Now as he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They, they were fishermen. He said to them, come, come after me. I will make you fishers of men. Then and there they abandoned their nets and they followed him. He walked along a little further and he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in their boat mending their nets. So he called them. And they, they left their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men and they followed Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Last Tuesday, the, the, the President of these United States got before the nation and he, he gave what's called the State of the Union Address, which basically is the agenda. What do we want to do in the next two years? And he had the, what he called a lot of good news, a lot of gospel stuff that, that he wants to accomplish. And, and it was interesting watching, obviously, the uh, Congress during his talk between those who were sitting on their hands and those who were standing up cheering depending on their mindset, depending on where they were coming from. Some of them thought it was the, the most wonderful thing since chewing gum, and some of them thought it was the worst thing that they've ever heard in their life. And they, they were, and we are, caught in our ways. It's hard to get out of our mind. And yet I am told the, the ultimate oxymoron is peace of mind. Because I've never met about anybody who's in their mind who's at peace, and anybody who's at peace who's in their mind. Well, today we've got Jesus doing his State of the Union. Only it's not the State of the Union, it's the State of the World. And he's setting an agenda too. He's setting an agenda for the entire world to see the world in a whole new way, and he calls it good news. Something radical, something new, and, and the time for it the time for it's right now, right now. The, the, the time is at hand, Mark says. So, so repent and believe the good news. Why? Because what's coming? What's coming? It's this elusive thing, and we've heard it since we were little kids, called the kingdom of God or the reign of God. We don't, we, we've always kind of thought that the kingdom of God was heaven, and then when you die, you go to heaven and you're in the kingdom of God. That's not it at all. The kingdom of God is not, is not a place you go to. The kingdom of God is a way of seeing the world with a very special set of eyes, divine eyes, with the eyes of Jesus, with the eyes and soul, as we talked about last week. And so Jesus is, is saying, you, uh, this is coming, with you or without you, it's going to come. And it may take a long, long time, of course, we're 2,000 years down the road and, and the kingdom is still coming, but it's not already here, it's just right outside of our reach. And it's, it's when God really is in control and we see through the eyes of God. And of course, when we begin to see through the eyes of God, what happens? The world changes. The war is ended. The famine ceases. The sickness is gone. And we don't see through the eyes of God. Because we're caught in our mind. And so he's saying, <clears throat> repent. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Well, repent, the, the Greek word for repent is, is metanoia. And it simply means turn around. But, but we, it's not a physical turning around. We're, we always get in trouble. We, we always literalize what Jesus is saying when he's speaking at a whole different level in a whole different way. He's saying, turn around your heart. Metanoia in, in, in Greek, meta is higher, nous is mind. So we're talking about a whole new mindset, a whole new way of seeing things. 
course, anybody who's been my parishioner for the last 40 years has heard me say a thousand times, the hardest thing for any human being to do in the world is to change your mind. We are caught in our mindsets. We, liberal, conservative, left, right, whatever, whatever our mindset is, it's almost impossible to change. We're, we're like the guy who comes to work and he says, Cheese sandwich, cheese sandwich today, cheese sandwich yesterday, cheese sandwich the day before that. I am sick and tired of cheese sandwiches day after day after day. And his buddy says, tell your wife to make something different. He says, what wife? I make it myself. <laughs> we don't want to change our minds. Why? Because that's the lens through which we see reality. And, 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 and yet there's a whole nother reality. There's a whole other world. We need to see it through a different lens, through the lens of the eyes of Jesus. And he sees that this kingdom is all around him. And he wants to give us those eyes too. So he's calling us out. Today he's, going, he's calling his disciples. He's calling the fishermen. And, 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 and he's not speaking to their heads. He's speaking to their hearts. He's just calling it by name. Peter, James, John, come, follow me. But he's speaking from his heart. His heart to your heart. And whenever I preach, I, I really try to preach not so much from the head as much as from the heart. Because your heart already, your heart, your soul already knows everything you need to know. The greatest compliments I ever get when I preach is, you know, Father, I've known that all my life. But when you said it, all of a sudden, I saw it. There's nothing new here. So he's calling to the hearts of the fishermen. He's saying, come and follow me. I, I will make you fishers of men. Now they are becoming part of this process of coming into the kingdom too. But it costs something. If you're going to change your mind, <coughs> if you're going to change your heart, if you're going to repent, if you're going to enter into the kingdom, it's no cheap grace. It's always going to cost something. And here's what it's going to cost them. they got to let go of seeing things they've already always seen things. Day after day, fishing, selling, cleaning their nets, doing the name thing, over, they gotta go of it. If we can possibly imagine a new world, we have to let go of the old world that we are clinging to. But the old world is the only world that I know, so I'm gonna cling to it. And the only fear a child has is the fear of falling, so they gotta cling and hold on to what they've got. We are, we are afraid we're gonna fall. And he's 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 telling us that you have to let go. You have to let go. And you're going to have to let go of your way of life. <clears throat> he says, you're fishermen? I'm going to make you fishers of men. A whole new way of life. Not catching physical fish, but catching the hearts of people to show them to see through the eyes of the divine. Now, I, my, my hunch is it was not really hard for, the, for, for Peter and James and John to leave their boats and their fishing nets because every time you turn to them in the Gospels, they're mending their nets. They must have been really lousy fishermen. They're always fixing their nets. They're never catching anything. So they're letting go of that. But not only are they letting go of that, though, they're letting go of their families. James and John leave their father in the boat with the hired men. And that means that's a big deal. In, in, in an ancient civilization, when you leave the community to go somewhere else, there's no life. There's no life outside your community. So they're making a radical, radical commitment. And then they leave into action. On the journey, and, and, and we, we're going to be following Mark all this next, uh, this year, this year B, and it, if you've never read Mark all the way through at one sitting, do it. It's a short little gospel. And everything is there. Everything is there. And so this year, we're, we're going to be going through the gospel of Mark. And this, this is the inaugural speech, so now they're on the journey, and there is an urgency to this journey. There's an urgency. Today, we, in the first reading, we have Jonah. And Jonah does not want to be a prophet. And he jumps off the boat. He gets swallowed by the whale. And he's three days in the darkness. And he gets spit up. He's going to do what God wants him to do, whether he wants to or not. And he's going to do it now. Why? 40 more days, and Nineveh will be destroyed. 40 more Do it now. Now. We don't have time. St. Paul puts it this way in the second reading. The world as we know it is passing away. And you know what? It is. 
As a matter of fact, these three readings that we've just heard tonight are probably as relevant for the world in which we are living. They are probably more relevant today than they maybe have been 2,000 years ago because the world as we know it really is passing away. And there are some who have picked up the good news of Jesus Christ and do see through his eyes and therefore speak about the kingdom as Christ would be speaking about the kingdom himself right here, right now. And one of those is the Pope, Francis. I don't know how God does what God does when God does it. You know, the black folks say that God might not be there when you want him, but he's always on time. He's on time with Francis. Because he's got an urgent message to proclaim. And we don't have a lot of time. And he is proclaiming the kingdom. And he's saying, we're going to have to turn around and we've got to change our mind. And what do we have to change our mind about? As a matter of fact, he's writing an encyclical about this subject. And people are already up in arms and fighting him. You know what the subject that he's writing about? And not writing about it as a political entity or an economic entity, but as a moral entity. He's writing an encyclical about climate change. But if we don't change our mind, if we keep on denying that this is going on, there will be no world. The world as we know it is radically changing. And it's not about us and our economic system for today, it's for tomorrow, the day after that, our children, our grandchildren, and if there will even be a birth here. Now, what's the moral? What's he trying to open our eyes to? What's he trying to show us? All of creation is sacred. But every creeping, crawling creature gives praise to God. All you need to do is open up the scriptures and you see sun and moon praise to God, stars and sky praise to God, animals and wild creatures praise to God, crawling and creepy things praise God. All part of the sacred cosmos in which we are living, and we have a serious obligation to change our minds and do something about it. And if we if we if we are able to have the humility to let go of our mindset, now it's gonna cost something. It's gonna cost a lifestyle. You know, we're a lifestyle in our country where we use well, what are we, five, six percent of the population, not even that, using fifty percent of the resources, something's gotta go. Something's got to go. There's no cheap grace. But it cost us something. We've got to let go of something. But it's good news. It's good news because when we follow him, what does he do? He opens our eyes to this wonderful, incredible interconnectedness of all of creation, of all of humanity. We are, where we are one with each other and one with God. And he has a name for this. It's at hand. It's right here. It's right now. The question for us is, we change our minds, repent, and follow him.